Onwards on tonight, we start with this. Leaked Border Force documents reveal that channel migrant crossings are set to hit 35,000 this year. Well, yesterday, James Cleverly said this. My target is to bring it down to zero. I mean, we're completely, uh, I'm completely committed. And actually, in 2024, uh, that's my target. My target is to reduce it to zero, to stop the boats. And I'm unambiguous about that. Yeah, we're going live now to James Cleverly trying to hit that target there. <laughs> But this is a problem entirely born out of Sunak and Cleverley's own personal weakness. They know that the only way to stop the boats is to have a deterrent. That deterrent needs to be something like a full throttle Rwanda plan, and that plan can only happen outside the ECHR. Suella Braverman and Robert Jemrick wanted out. Suella was sacked and Jemrick resigned on principle because Sunak wouldn't do what was necessary. I am convinced that this country is now suffering and will suffer for years to come because Rishi Sunak and James Cleverley aren't up for the fight when it comes to the ECHR because they know they won't be in power long and don't want to be remembered as the people who try to get us out of the ECHR. That is a dereliction of duty. That puts personal gain over national interest. Now, yesterday, I revealed on this show that an impeccable source told me that the vast majority of channel migrants do not speak a word of English and will need to be on benefits and in social housing for the foreseeable future. This comes as some devastating information emerges from Europe. And you may well have missed this. So, showing the impact of legal immigration on the welfare state. In the Netherlands, the cost to the taxpayer of non-Western immigration amounts to 17 billion euros. And the annual net benefits of Western immigration total 1 billion euros. So you can do the math for yourselves there. If immigration continues at 2015 to 19 levels, the annual budget burden will hit 50 billion euros. The Dutch welfare state will crumble. Let's go to Denmark now. The Danish finance ministry concludes that non-Western immigrants are most likely to remain lifelong recipients of public finances compared to Western immigrants or native Danes. In Germany, about 45% of those who receive unemployment benefits are not German, costing the taxpayers a cool 20 billion euros per year. Austria has almost 60% of unemployment benefits going to people from a migrant background. Can you imagine the stats for Britain? There was a report published in April which showed unemployment by ethnic background, which is, of course, not the same as recent migrant employment data, OK? Given that we've just had the latest round of immigration figures, those numbers do not yet exist. But what it did show was this in the UK. 3.1% of people from a white ethnic background were unemployed, compared to 11.3% of people from a mixed slash multiple ethnic background and 8.7% of people from a Pakistani ethnic background. We are also not better off per capita. So we have to have a serious conversation now about how enriched our lives actually are here in Britain and in Europe as a result of mass legal and illegal immigration. Let's get the thoughts of my panel, our author and broadcaster Christine Hamilton. We've got businessman and activist Adam Brooks and former Labour Party advisor Matthew Laza. Christine, as the very notion that we are enriched by immigration, both legal and to an extent illegal, just been burst. Well, I jolly well hope so. And the question, do we need to stop the boats? Of course we do. Do we want to stop the boats? Yes. Does the Prime Minister want to stop the boats? Yes. For his own electoral advantage. We all want to lose weight. We want to do more exercise. We want to give up alcohol. Wanting to do something and actually doing it are two completely different things. Mm -hmm. They've had 13 years to get a grip on this. And no, it's a complete nonsense. Um, I mean, £18 million pounds per day immigration costs us. £18 million pounds per day. We need a new home. That includes a flat. Every five minutes to yeah. house our expanding population. No, people just say, oh, yes, but look at all the immigrants in, who look after you if you're in hospital, etc. Yes, of course, and they're wonderful people. But on balance, immigration is costing this country. And Adam, these are the figures that are coming outside of Europe mm. right now. And there used to be the argument that if we didn't have mass immigration, then we would be poorer. I don't think that argument will exist anymore. Look, there's this lefty lie that they like to put on social media that we are importing scientists and, uh, you know, academics on these dinghies, when the truth is what you said, most of them cannot speak English. Most of them will not end up working. You know, mm. and, and the message that's been sent this week by Rishi Sunak and James Cleverley and this government, 112,000 have cleared the backlog. Basically, even the ones that they haven't given asylum to will end up staying here. We will not deport 
any. Yeah. So what happens? How many are missing? Where have they come from? Mm. What, what are their motives for being here? Have their backgrounds been checked? No. no. This is a national emergency. OK. Matthew, has your life been enriched by mass immigration? Well, I think that the country as a whole uh, has been enriched by immigration, uh, and so uh, has my life. But uh, that enriched by immigration doesn't mean that you want to have an open borders policy or that you don't believe that immigration should be managed and controlled, and at the moment it's too high, which is what I believe. It, well, it's also, and never mind just the numbers, it's been an incredibly divisive in certain parts of this country. We've got some of our big cities where you've got different completely different populations living side by side, street by street, and they are living completely different lives. Now, that, I don't think, enriches lives at all. When you look at some of the unemployment figures that we can see there, of the people unemployed in this country, it uh, says anyway that uh, around just over 3% of them, 3.1% were from a so white ethnic background. They were unemployed compared to 11.3% of people from a mixed or multiple uh, ethnic background. And not all of those people are, of course, immigrants. Some of those people would have been born here, etc. But I think it does raise serious questions, doesn't it, about how productive our immigration system actually is for us. I mean, how many of those people are paying tax? We know that people coming across on small boats are almost never going to be a net economic benefit to us, for example. Look, I, I don't care the colour of anyone's skin that wants to come to this country, but they must come here and they must want to live side by side and have input and contribute to this country. It doesn't matter what colour they are. There will be races that scream, you know, this, that. Uh, I, I'm not interested in that. But these people are not bringing anything to this country. At the moment, it's a worry. We do not know who they are or what they've done in the past. And G GDP well, per capita has fallen since 2008. That now, is the big one. That's but, the big one. GDP has fallen, which... Uh, and what, man, when, you dig, when, when, everybody has fallen. when you dig down into the...